Hello everyone. I am so excited to be here today to talk to you guys about DevOps. Now, before I begin, let me do a quick intro. My name is Abel Wang. I'm a principal cloud advocate and the DevOps lead here at Microsoft. I also lead a team of five DevOps practitioners and our sole purpose is to help everybody get into Azure using DevOps best practices. And we are here to help. So please ask us your questions. The easiest way to get a hold of us is through Twitter because we are on Twitter all the time. Tweet your questions to us, hashtag it LOECDA. That will literally light up a team room for us. We will see it. We will answer your questions if we can. And if we can't, we will find the people at Microsoft that can. So we are here to help. Follow us on Twitter, ask us your questions, tweet at us and use our hashtag. All right, so today's session is all about DevOps. But what exactly is DevOps? If you ask 10 different people, you're probably gonna get 20 different answers, right? So let me give you Microsoft's definition of DevOps. For us, DevOps is something very specific. DevOps is the union of people, process, and products to enable the continuous delivery of value to our end users. Now, I said this very carefully because every single word in that definition has meaning. Now, notice I didn't say continuously deliver code because what will that give us? Piles and piles of code sitting on a server somewhere. It does our end users no good whatsoever. And notice I didn't even say continuously deliver feature because I can be delivering feature after feature, sprint after sprint. But if it's not what my end users need or want, why am I wasting the time in doing it, right? So the key here is we need to continuously deliver value. And why is this so important? Here's the thing. The speed of business today is so ridiculously fast. The only way that we can keep up and innovate fast enough is if we adopt DevOps best practices. And here's the thing. If we don't adopt DevOps best practices, guess what? Our competitors either have or they will. And once they do, they will out innovate us and they will render us obsolete. And none of us wants to be obsolete. Now, everything that I just said, this has been DevOps theory for quite some time, but we've been doing DevOps long enough now that this is no longer theory. We have empirical proof now that shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that teams that adopt DevOps best practices absolutely out innovate teams that don't. And not just by a little, but by a lot. And that right there is why we must adopt DevOps best practices. However, this isn't easy to do, right? In order to do this correctly, you really have to address all three pillars, the people, the process, and the products. Now the people, this is the hardest pillar to address because ultimately what you're talking about is a cultural shift that needs to occur in your organization. And it needs to start from the very, very top and work its way all the way to the very bottom. Everybody needs to be involved and everybody needs to be hyper-focused and concentrating on this one thing. They need to, everyone needs to be hyper-focused on continuously delivering value, whatever that means, whatever that takes. Next is the process. This one is pretty simple because we need a process that will let us iterate fast enough yet still deliver code of high enough quality. So processes like Agile or Scrum, they work great. And we also need to have the products and tooling that can help enable all of this. And what I mean by that is our tooling needs to be able to help us plan all of our iterations, sprint after sprint. So we need to have things like backlogs and Kanban boards and things like that. And for our developers, our systems, our tools need to be useful. Like they need, we need, they need to be able to check in their code and associate their changes to their check-ins. And they also need to have tools built in place so as soon as they check their code in, it's gonna go ahead and kick off an automated build that's gonna compile everything, run all of their unit tests. And if everything looks good, it will go ahead and kick off more automation that will pick up those bits and start deploying those bits into the dev environment, QA, UAT, all the way out even into production. And we need all of these systems to be automated because this could be happening all the time, right? Multiple times a day even. So because of that, we need this process to be repeatable and consistent every single time. And automation is what will give us that. And when our code hits production, it doesn't end there. Because once our code hits production, I need to be able to monitor. I need to be able to monitor for things like, is my app up or down? Is my app performing well? And what are users really doing in my application? Because if I can answer that, then I can figure out, am I delivering value? 
And if I am, hooray for that. For my next sprint, I can double down and continue working on the things that I am. And if I'm not, that's not a big deal either because for the next iteration, I can just course correct. Pick something else to try, run an experiment, and maybe go down that path. And luckily for us, there are all sorts of tools out there that can help enable all of this for us. And Azure is an open platform, so you can really use whatever tooling you want to use. But today, I wanted to show you guys a tool, the tooling that's built directly inside of Azure that can replace all of this. And that product is called Azure DevOps Services. And what is Azure DevOps Service? It is literally everything you need to take an idea and turn that idea into a working piece of software in the hands of your end users for any language targeting any platform. Now, this is so important, I'm gonna say it one more time. All of these tools, these Azure DevOps tools built into Azure, it is for any language targeting any platform. .NET into IIS, of course. Java into Linux machines, of course. Uh, Node into a Kubernetes cluster, absolutely. How about a Kubernetes cluster in someone else's cloud? Well, don't use someone else's cloud because that will make me cry. However, our tooling literally doesn't care. If you want to go into someone else's cloud, guess what? Our tooling can totally handle that as well. So how does it do all of this? How can it possibly be everything you need in your software projects? It does that through a suite of five separate tools. First, there's Azure Boards. What is that? That's a work item tracking system. Uh, using Azure Boards, you're able to track any unit of work in your software project. So it tracks things like uh, user stories, impediments, uh, features, epics, bugs, things like that, right? And there's a full set of visual tools that will help you manage all of that as well. Next is Azure Pipelines. This is the CI-CD system built into Azure DevOps. And this CI-CD system is fully customizable, fully configurable. You can make this CI-CD system do whatever you want. And it is for, again, any language targeting any platform. Next is Azure Repos. This is the source control system built into Azure. There's actually two source control systems inside of Azure. One of them is a centralized version control system. The other one is a distributed version control system. The distributed version control system is just Git. So no matter what type of flavor you like for your version control system, Azure Repos has it. The next two is Azure Test Plans and Azure Artifacts. Azure Test Plans is a manual test case management system, and Azure Artifacts is an artifact repository. And between all five of these, you pretty much can do whatever you need in your software project. So instead of me talking about it, I'm going to go ahead, go into a live demo and show you exactly what I mean. So for my demo app, I have an app that's hosted in Azure right now. This is a web tracking application. It tracks a uh, uh, health tracking application. It tracks the exercises that I do throughout the day. It also tracks the food that I eat throughout the day. And based on calories in and calories out, it draws some pretty pictures and uh, tells me if I'm healthy or not. So if we go ahead and look at all the properties I'm tracking for the food, one of the things that I'm tracking is the color of the food, which seems kind of weird and stupid, right? Why am I tracking the color of the food? So I need to make the changes. I need to get rid of this. So what that means is I need to change the schema of my database and I need to change the code of my web code as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and jump into Azure DevOps. And here you can see my Kanban board, which is a visual representation of all the work that I need to do. And you can see somebody here has created a issue for me. This one says food items should not have a color field. So that's what I want to work on. So the first thing that I usually want to do is I want to create a branch for myself to work in. Right? I need to create a dev branch for myself. Easy enough to do, I can just click on these three dots, click on new branch. Let's go ahead and name this food color branch. And we're going to base this off of my Mercury Help Core repo and off the master branch. We click on create branch and bam, just like that. I've now created a development branch for myself to work on. And let's go ahead and pull that down and make our changes. So let me jump into my dev environment. Let me go ahead and pull that branch down. And then let's go ahead and check out the food color branch. All right, so now I'm ready to make my changes. Let's bring up my code. And remember, I need to change my database schema as well as my code. So here is my code. Let me go ahead and comment this chunk of code out. 
And here is more code that I need to change. So let me comment this chunk of code out. And that's all the code changes I need to make. But I do need to make a change to my database schema as well. And I have my database schema captured in my database project. So let me go ahead and go to the table that I need to make the changes in. Here's my food log entries table. Here's my color column. We don't need that anymore. So let me go ahead and delete that. And then we'll save everything. And now we're ready to check in our code. So let me jump back to the command line where I can issue my git commands. Let me go ahead and do a git add everything. Let's do a commit. And then let's push these changes back up into Azure repos. Now, Azure repos is smart enough that once my change hits Azure repos, it knows I checked in new code to my development branch. And it will ask me, hey, you just checked in code for your food color branch. Do you want to create a pull request before you merge that down into master? Which, of course, I do. So let's go ahead and create a pull request. Now, the very first thing we're going to see is a page that has the title, has the description. I can change these if I want to. And we can start adding reviewers as well. So I can start adding people as my reviewers. And then, as you can see, it's already automatically included the work item that I'm working on. So let's go ahead and create this pull request. And once I create the pull request, it's going to take us to a timeline of everything that's happened in this particular pull request. Nothing has happened yet, so let's go ahead and do some stuff in this pull request. If we quick click on the files, this will show us all the files that we have touched and all the changes that we have made. So we can go ahead and start leaving comments. Uh, your changes were brilliant, because all my pull requests go like that. We can reply to that, thanks. And let's go ahead and reply and resolve this. And in, in this fashion, we can just go back and forth and back and forth, right? Eventually, I can either approve this pull request or I can deny it. Uh, let's go ahead and approve it, and then we'll go ahead and complete this as well. Now, once we complete the pull request, it's gonna go ahead and merge those changes into the master branch. Now, because we have our system set up already, once the code hits the master branch, it should kick off a build. And here you go. There's my build. It's already been kicked off. Now we can drill in here. And if we go all the way into the individual build, we can see in real time as it's building our application. So while it's building our app, let me go ahead and show you how you can set up one of these builds. The build engine inside of Azure Pipelines, it's a generic task runner, right? It just does one task after another, after another, after another, after another. So what I'm saying here is I'm literally telling it to use NuGet, restore my packages from NuGet. Let's go ahead and build my solution using Visual Studio. And then let's go ahead and run all of my unit tests. And when I'm done with that, let's package everything up so then it's now ready to be deployed. Now to customize this, remember it's fully customizable for any language targeting any platform. To customize this, what you would do is just add and remove tasks. Now out of the box, there's like hundreds of tasks that you can just start using. These tasks, they do range from all sorts of languages and all sorts of platforms. Like Ant, for instance, is all about Java. If you wanted to use Maven for your Java builds, guess what? You can search for Maven and bam, there are Maven tasks as well. Like I said, out of the box, there are hundreds of tasks that you can just download and start using. Now, what do you do if you want to do something that doesn't exist out of the box? That's not a problem. I would jump into the marketplace because in the marketplace, our partners have created over 1,500 build and release tasks now, again, for all sorts of languages and platforms. You can just download and start using these, right? So that's super, super cool as well. And if you happen to want to do something that doesn't exist out of the box and doesn't exist in the marketplace, that's okay as well because you can write your own custom task. A custom task is nothing more than PowerShell or Node.js. So what that means is anything you can do from the command line, you can easily get this build and release system to do as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to our build. And it looks like our build has finished. Yay, hooray for that. And not only has it finished, it's created some build artifacts for us. So if we go ahead and look at our build artifacts, you can see that it created a DAC pack, which is what I'm going to use to deploy my database schema changes. And it also created for us our web app that we need to upload to Azure, and it's zipped everything up so that now it's ready, to, it's packaged and ready to be deployed. Because our build was successful, it should have kicked off our release pipeline as well. So if we go into our release pipeline, we can see there it is. There's our application and it's being deployed through our release pipeline. Now, 
let me go ahead and show you how you can set up this release pipeline. This release pipeline, the first thing that you do is you go ahead and define all the environments you're going to have. So I have a dev environment, a QA, and a prod. Now, after you define the environment, you need to go into each one. And from here, you need to define what are the tasks that you're going to use to deploy your application into that specific environment. This should look just like the build because guess what? It is exactly the same engine, right? It's a task runner, one task after another. So here I'm literally saying, let's go ahead and take that zip file and deploy that into Azure App Service. Then I'm gonna go ahead and deploy my database schema changes using a DACPAC deploy task. And finally, I'm gonna run a set of automated UI tests, a set of Selenium tests against my dev environment to make sure everything looks good. Right. To customize this, again, just like the build, you just add and remove tasks. Hundreds of tasks that you can choose from. There's also the marketplace where there are over 1,500 tasks that you can just download and start using. And you can create your own custom tasks as well because it's just PowerShell and Node.js. Super, super easy to do. So again, you can make this build and release system do whatever you need it to do. All right, so let's go back to our release pipeline. And the next thing that I wanted to show you is, yes, you do define your environments. You define the tasks that you want to have to deploy your application into a particular environment. The last thing that you can do is before and after each environment, you can add manual approvers. Now, these manual approvers, they can be no manual approvers, which means it will just flow through the gate freely. Or you can have a list of approvers, which means every single person on the list has to approve before it will pass through the gate. Or you can have a group of people where if one person in the group approves, it will flow through the gate. Or you can have a combination of lists and groups. So really, you can make this as, as secure and as tightened down as, as you need it to. Or you can open it completely wide up and it just flows freely as well. So whatever your needs, the system can handle it. All right. So let's go ahead and jump back to our real deployment. And it looks like we've deployed into the dev environment already. And now it's waiting for a post deployment approval. So let's go into our dev environment. Here it is. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And remember that color field? Bam, it is now gone. And not only is the color field gone in the web UI, if we go ahead and look in the database, that column has really been dropped, right? Because this is a real deployment. So great. Everything looks fantastic now. Let me go ahead and approve this. So I'll approve. And as soon as I approve, it's going to flow on over into the QA environment. However, I tightened down security a little bit because I didn't just want to blast code into QA without them knowing it. Maybe QA is doing testing or something like that. So I wanted somebody from the QA department to manually approve this before the code flows into the QA environment. So I wanted somebody to come in here and click on approve. And if they click approve here, immediately bits will start flowing into QA. You can also check, check the deferred deployment box, and now you can approve this deployment, but schedule when you want the actual deployment to happen. So I can be like, yes, I do approve this, but let's make sure we deploy Saturday at two in the morning when nobody's on the system, right? So you can do things like that. But for this demo, I'll go ahead and click on approve, and now bit starts flowing, and it will flow all the way into the QA environment. So now working in a fashion like this, I'm able to deploy my code from my dev environment to my QA all the way out into production. Pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool stuff and it's pretty easy to set up as well. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to show you all is as cool as this system is, right? Because it works really well. Um, I'm not the biggest fan at creating CI CD pipelines. They're kind of a pain in the butt to create. Uh, but if you use Azure DevOps services with Azure, we can make things incredibly easy for you. And let me show you what I mean. Starting from nothing at all, no source code, no infrastructure. Maybe I just have the idea of, I want to create a node app that runs in a Kubernetes cluster. By using something called an Azure DevOps project from the, the Azure portal, I'm able to create and scaffold out everything that I need with just a couple of clicks. So let me show you. Let's create a brand new resource. And the resource that we want to create now is a DevOps project. And the first thing you're going to see is a whole slew of different languages that we potentially could use, right? .NET, Node, PHP, Java, Python, Ruby, Go. Remember earlier when I said any language targeting any platform? I really, really, really meant it. Any language targeting any platform. So let me show you what I mean. 
Uh, let's do a Node.js application. And we'll make this a simple Node app. And let's deploy this into a, how about a Kubernetes cluster? So there we go. Next, it's going to ask me to give this a name. So let's just call this Able Demo 10. And the project that I want to do this in is my demo account. And now let's go ahead and deploy this. And I'll just click on Done. And voila. That's literally all I need to do, right? This takes a little bit to, to completely spin up because uh, it's doing a lot of stuff. So what is it doing? It is creating for us a team project inside of Azure DevOps to do all the work. It's also creating for us sample code in the language that we picked. We picked Node, so it's going to create for us uh, sample code in Node. And then it's create for us a CI CD pipeline that makes sense for the technologies that we picked. So in this case, it's going to be a Node application that eventually needs to run in a Docker container in a Kubernetes cluster, right? So it's going to do all of that for us on the fly, which is really pretty cool. And when it's all done, you get a screen that kind of looks like this where on the left hand side you get to see all the res uh, on the left hand side you get to see your CI CD pipeline and on the right hand side you get to see all the infrastructure that it deployed for you out in Azure. All right. So, these are all deep links that will take you directly to the resource that this project created for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our code. If I click on this link, it will take me directly to my git repo where all of my code is sitting. So the first thing you'll notice is it has an ARM template because we try to use DevOps best practices. So we're going to use infrastructure as code. So we define the infrastructure that we're going to deploy using ARM templates. If I go underneath my application, I'll be able to see that this is just a sample Node.js application, right? This is a real application. It's just sample code. Next, let's take a look at the CI CD pipelines. The build pipeline, remember, we're going to create for you a build pipeline that makes sense for the technologies that you picked. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, we've created a build pipeline that is for a Node.js application that's going to be turned into a Docker container, pushed into container registry, Azure Container Registry, and then turned into a Helm package uh, to be installed in my Kubernetes cluster. Right? And when this is all done, it sends it on through to my release pipeline. And again, we create a release pipeline for you that makes sense for the technologies that you picked. So in this case here, we're going to deploy into a Kubernetes cluster. So the first thing that we do is we're going to go ahead and deploy the infrastructure using our ARM template, which will then create our Kubernetes cluster. And then we go ahead and deploy our application into that Kubernetes cluster. And since we used Helm, we're going to install our Helm package. Right. Very, very cool stuff. And when it's all done, here's our app. It's gone through the pipeline. It's been deployed now all the way into our Kubernetes cluster. And here is our cluster. Let me click on it and bam. There's our sample app deployed all the way out into Azure. Pretty cool, huh? This right here is really, really cool stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So the next thing people usually ask me is, this is great. I love how it just scaffolds everything out for you. With just a couple of clicks, you get everything. Um, but how do I get my real application through this pipeline, right? Well, let's go ahead and jump back into our pipeline. And there's a couple of ways we can approach this. This right here is our Git repo that holds everything, right? And this is just a Git repo, which means it's easy enough for me to clone this environment clone it onto my hard drive. I can then delete everything that's in it, copy my application in there, go ahead and check this in, and then it will go ahead and send my application through the build and release pipeline, right? And that works great. There's also another way that you can do this. Um, let's go ahead and go to the build. The very first thing the build does is it downloads all the source code from the repo. And it does ask you, where do you want to pull the repo from? So let me go ahead and show you what I'm in. First task is get source, and it's pulling everything from my Azure repos right now. My real code, it's actually held in Git, right? So let me, in, in GitHub. So let me go to GitHub to pull that code down. So I've already connected my account to my GitHub account. Let me go ahead and pick my project, which is uh, my learn module. Here's my learn PR. I'm sorry, learn DevOps. There we go. And let me go ahead and save this. 
and queue it, and voila, now I'm done, right? What I've done now is I've connected this build and release pipeline to my repo that's sitting out in GitHub. So now anytime somebody pushes code into GitHub, it will go ahead and trigger this particular build. And what is this build doing? It's gonna to go to GitHub, download my latest code from there. Then it's gonna build everything and package everything up so it's ready for a Kubernetes cluster. Then it'll send it through my release pipeline, which will use Helm to go ahead and deploy my application into that particular Kubernetes cluster. And when we're done, we end up with a pipeline that kind of looks like this, right? Sent through our pipeline, we click on the endpoint and bam, there we go. There's our Node.js application, our real Node.js app that has been downloaded from GitHub, compiled, built, sent through the release pipeline, deployed all the way out into infrastructure that it provisioned for me in Azure. This is a game changer, right? This makes my life as a dev so much easier. Like I said earlier, I'm not the biggest fan in terms of creating CI CD pipelines. They're just kind of a pain to make, but using Azure DevOps and the power of Azure together, man, I can scaffold almost everything out for me where all I need to do now is just drop in my real code and hooray for that, I'm done. Like I said, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so I've shown two examples now of how you can use Azure DevOps to build out your CI CD pipelines. Uh, one of them was just a pure CI CD pipeline that I created by hand, the other one since I'm using Azure, I let the power of Azure help me scaffold out a CI CD pipeline for me. And then after the fact, I threw in my own code. But in both those examples, these, the, the code that I'm using, it's pretty simple, right? This is kind of a contrived example that, that, that I've created for y'all. Uh, so oftentimes people will come up to me and ask me, yeah, those demos are great, but how can you use Azure DevOps in a real world, like a real world application? Or can you even do that? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. So let me show you a build and release pipeline that I have for a real world application. This real world application that I have, this is a microservice based architecture. It has a web front end that's written in ASP.NET and I do mean old school ASP.NET. It also has an API layer that's written in Node that's running inside of a Kubernetes cluster. There's another service layer as well that's going to be running in a container, a Docker container. This one is written in .NET Core. And finally, there's also a mobile portion as well. And this mobile app, of course, it's written for an iOS application, uh, so it needs to be compiled on a Mac, right? That's just a licensing thing. So what you're looking at right here is one build that will build all four portions of my application in parallel. So this is kind of cool, check this out. First, I have my web front end that will build, and it's gonna use a Windows agent to build everything for me. Remember, this is an ASP.NET application, old school ASP.NET web front end. Next, we're gonna go ahead and use a Mac agent, a hosted Mac agent, and we will create and build that iOS application for you. Remember, iOS apps can only be built on a Mac. Um, it has to be on a Mac, and, and we provide a Mac for you to, to build it. And then next, this is gonna be my services layer, which is my ASP.NET Core application uh, that needs to run in a Docker container. So what do I do with this? I use a Linux agent, an Ubuntu agent, to build my application, test it, publish it, create a Docker image, and then I push that image into Azure Container Registry. And finally, the last portion, again, it's on a Linux agent. Uh, this one is by Node.js app. Uh, this is my API layer. I create a Kubernetes uh, Helm package out of this. And once I create the Helm package, I package everything up. So now it's ready to be deployed in my Kubernetes cluster. So one build, four portions, all running in parallel to build my very, very complex application all in one shot. And again, just to make sure you understand, understand what's going on, I'm using hosted agents. So these are build agents that are provided for you by Microsoft. And we have hosted agents for Windows, of course, Mac, and Linux. We are the only cloud vendors that will give you build agents for all three platforms. And they're all just free to use for your building releases as well. All right, so once the build is complete, 
right? This will go ahead and kick off my release pipeline. And let me show you what my release pipeline looks like. Here we go. This is my release pipeline. Pretty cool, huh? Once again, it's a fairly complicated application. So, of course, you might be wondering, why am I deploying my application all at once, right? If this is microservices based, one of the key benefits of a microservice is you don't have to deploy everything all together. You can just deploy the microservices that you want uh, or the ones that have changed instead of the whole thing all together. Um, that is a huge power that microservices give you, but unfortunately, my app is not quite ready for that type of deployment, right? And the, and the reason why is because once I tried to do that, I quickly realized that I didn't think about uh, dependencies between my services once I started trying to deploy that. So for instance, what if deployment, uh, I'm sorry, service A deploys, de depends on service B, which depends on service C, right? Uh, which depends on service A. Now, how I deploy my services matter, and because it's a circular reference, I really can't deploy in any type of order without causing some type of outage at some point in time, right? So because of that, what I need to do at this moment until I manage to tease apart that dependency is by deploying everything all at once together, all portions, all four portions, including my mobile app, and they need to all travel together. Very, very complicated to do, but using Azure DevOps and Azure pipelines, it's really not that bad. And I create a pipeline that looks like this. Let's go ahead and dive into this and I'll dissect everything that I'm doing. Here is my pipeline. The very first thing that I do is I deploy a set of tools that I'm gonna use within my pipeline, right? And I'll kind of go through the different sets of tools uh, as I walk through the pipeline. The next thing that I do is I deploy all four pieces of my application in parallel, right? The web portion, my API layer, my mobile portion, and I also set up DNS all on the fly. Now, when I deploy each one of these uh, uh, sections, right, for instance, my web or my API layer or my mobile portion, I'm also deploying the infrastructure using infrastructure as code. So let me show you what I mean. Here I am deploying the web portion. Uh, the first thing that I do is I go ahead and download all of my secrets from Azure Key Vault. Then I go ahead and provision for me in Azure my uh, I guess here, this is going to be my Azure app service and also my SQL server. So I provision and configure. How am I provisioning it? I'm using a combination of both ARM templates and also PowerShell scripts uh, calling the Azure CLI. So this is stored in source control right alongside my source code. So now my infrastructure is versioned right alongside my code as well as right alongside the schema of my database. So I'm using infrastructure as code. So on the fly, I can go ahead and provision my system. As soon as I've provisioned my web app and also my database schema, I go ahead and deploy my web app, and then I go ahead and deploy my SQL Server as well. All right, the next thing that I do is deploy my API layer. Now, this API layer, again, what am I doing? First thing that I do is I pull down all of my secrets from Azure Key Vault. Then again, then I go ahead and deploy my Kubernetes cluster using an ARM template. And after I do that, then I deploy my, uh, my application, my API layer, into this Kubernetes cluster as a Helm package. Uh, next portion, let's go ahead and look at the mobile. In the mobile portion, what do I do? I deploy my mobile app into, uh, well, my, well, into my, my, the machines, the handsets of my alpha testers, or in this case, my beta testers. And how do I do that? I use the power of Visual Studio App Center. I use App Center to help me deploy my application to the handsets of my beta testers. Right? And finally, the last thing that I do is I also set up DNS. Right? So DNS is held inside of my DNS settings that are held inside of Cloudflare. So there is a REST API that I can call uh, that will set my DNS settings for me. So that's exactly what I do using this PowerShell script. I call a REST that I call the REST API call to update the DNS. Now here's something kind of interesting. The next thing that I want to do is deploy front door, which is kind of like an Uber load balancer that sits in front of all the pieces. Um, it sits in front of all the pieces of my application. However, I cannot provision and configure front door until 
my DNS settings has propagated all the way back down to uh, my local machines. So what I've done is at the end of when I deploy my DNS settings, I created an automated approval gate. And this automated approval gate, uh, this is a, a, the ability within Azure Pipelines um, where you can use the power of automation or even AI to help you determine if a gate should pass or fail. So in my case here, I created a gate where what it does is it checks DNS settings to say, hey, did DNS settings uh, propagate all the way down to my local machine? Now, when you set up one of these gates, you get to set the polling frequency and also how long you want this to run until you time out and just give up, right? So in my case here, I'm saying the polling frequency is gonna be five minutes and the, the uh, timeout rate is gonna be 24 hours. So if DNS hasn't propagated within 24 hours, I've got bigger problems, right? Let's just go ahead and, and, and kill this deployment. So what it does is I go ahead and set my DNS settings up in Cloudflare and then it enables, it starts up my automated approval gate where now it starts polling my local machine. Hey, did DNS settings propagate all the way down to you? If it hasn't, it waits again, waits five minutes and asks again, hey, DNS, did it propagate all the way down to your local machine? And if it did, it will pass through the gate. And if it didn't, it will keep on polling until it finally does or it times out. And when it finally does and it reaches front door and actually when all four of these are finished, that's when it will start my front door task. So what is the front door task doing? This is kind of neat. Um, I download my secrets from Key Vault again. Then I go ahead and I provision front door. And again, what is front door? This is like an Uber load balancer. It does more than just load balancing as well. Uh, because I have all these microservices in the back end, in order for them to communicate to each other without running into course issues, I need to have one single point of entry, right? One single domain name that they're all going through. But because they're all different microservices, they don't have that, right? But what I can do with front door is I can map all of my backend services so that it looks like it's all traveling through one single domain. So because of that, I no longer have course issue. This was just an easy way to fix that problem for me. That's why it's not front door in front of it. All right, so the first thing that I do is uh, using the Azure CLI and a PowerShell script, I go ahead and provision front door for myself and I configure it. And after I do that, that's kind of neat, I use uh, a PowerShell script to set my HTTPS for this particular web app, right? So by setting HTTPS, um, I'm uploading my certificate, I'm doing all the settings to get all that set in as well. And when that's done, let's go ahead and jump back to our pipeline. It will flow in through and then in parallel, I'm gonna run a set of automated UI tests against my web app and also run a set of automated UI tests against my mobile portion as well. And if all of that passes, it's gonna go on and flow into my beta done stage where on this stage, it's waiting for a manual approver. So here's where, as a tester, I can now test my application, make sure everything looks good. And if it does, I can approve it. And as soon as I approve it, it will go ahead and flow into, again, four deployments in parallel, my mobile, app service, web, my DNS settings for my production environment. And then basically I just rinse and repeat and do the same type of stuff all the way until production is deployed 100%, right? So the question was, what can you do with Azure Pipelines? Can you do any real world apps? The answer is 100% absolutely you can. And pretty much you can do whatever your imagination can think of, right? Uh, I haven't yet run into a real world situation where I couldn't figure out how to create a pipeline to automate everything that I need. So this little example here, this is a real world app doing real world things. Uh, yeah, whatever you wanna do with pipelines, you absolutely can. So to recap, what have I shown you guys today? First of all, hopefully now you understand A, what DevOps is, and B, how important DevOps is to us today. This isn't just something we wanna think about. DevOps is, again, 100% vital to everything that we do in the world of software. Without DevOps, we are not able to innovate fast enough, so we must have DevOps. Number two, Azure DevOps service, the service, the DevOps services that are built inside of Azure, they are literally, it's literally everything you need for your software project, everything. And I've shown you today 
using Azure with Azure DevOps, that's when the magic really happens, right? That's when you can really scaffold things out and make things happen super, super easily. So hopefully you have now seen the power and flexibility that you have by using Azure DevOps services. So all you devs out there, call to action. What do you need to go do? Go to dev.azure.com, create yourself a free subscription or free account into Azure DevOps and start building out CA, CD pipelines for your projects. Let's go ahead and start DevOpsing everything. Thank you all very, very much.